For me, flowers in the garden are one of the biggest joys of actually having a garden. So it'll be fun to see whether it's going to be a classic British barbecue where we're standing out with our tongs in the pouring rain under umbrellas. Raspberries, goji berries, just the berries. <laughs> we're very crazy. <laughs> we're very crazy. <laughs> new week and there's lots of gardening to be done this week we've got a lot to do and we've got to start with that which is three tons of soil which needs to be moved down to the vegetable garden and if you know our vegetable garden is all the way down there somewhere that soil has got to be moved somehow and unfortunately there is no magic way of getting it down it has to be brute strength so that yeah. means a lot of buckets a lot of shovels and just loading up the wheelbarrow and wheeling it down Leopold's already out with us he's here he's enjoying life sniffing around playing with the daffodils. Leopold's actually just warming up and limbering up because he's also going to be getting involved in dragging the soil down to the vegetable garden. So come on, Leopold. <laughs> but he does actually really help us, genuinely. Uh, he will come does down. help us, obviously. He motivates us. He motivates, yeah, because he runs up and down. So every time we go down, he runs down. Every time we come up, he runs up. So he gets his steps yeah. in as well. So it's quite good exercise for all of us. We had a successful trip to the garden center over the weekend and we picked up a whole bunch of roses. Uh, more hookera. We've got some black currants and red currants and maybe white currants. So there's lots of those things that have all got to go into the veg garden and just around the garden in general. But I'm really looking forward to getting those roses into the front of the vegetable garden. I think it's going to be hopefully really pretty. So there's lots of planting to be done, but we've first got to get the soil in because until the soil's down, then we can't really plant. So that's the first job. All the daffodils are looking fantastic at the moment. So a big thank you to this week's sponsor, Dutch Grown. Yeah. All of the pops of color that we've got around the property at the moment are all bulbs that we've planted from Dutch Grown. That's the hyacinth, the tulips and the daffodils. So thanks very much guys for sponsoring this week's video. So if you're looking for any spring bulbs or summer bulbs or just bulbs in general, go check out Dutch Grown. They've very kindly given us a 10% discount code. So I'll put all the details below. of soil done and moved which is great Bush bang. I've got to say I'm sure on camera it looks very gray and miserable and it is <laughs> <laughs> and it's very misty but there is such a fine mist and actually just walking down here all the time and having that very gentle mist there's no wind there's no breeze um, it's a really nice temperature it's like a room temperature feel when you're working this hard um, and just to have that mist it just keeps you really cool so and fresh so it's not cold at all, though I'm sure on camera it looks ab like we're absolutely freezing, but honestly it's not cold, it's actually quite uh, it's pleasant. It's a fabulous temperature for doing stuff like this because it doesn't... Uh just keeps your energy levels up, you don't get sapped and drained. So yeah, it's we've, a lot easier. we've learned the hard way, haven't we? We've done this before where yeah. we've actually waited for a really nice sunny day <laughs> and we have just died in the heat oh, and right. the baking sun and it's just been like, okay, this is not the right thing to do. So actually just having it when it's like this means that you can just keep going yeah. and you're just really fresh. So that's the vegetable garden done. The house martins are also back, which is really lovely. They come every kind of April time and they nest uh, all around the property. Uh, but one, we always have at least one or two nests inside the garage, inside the rafters of the garage. And then we have them all along the underneath that area of the roof. Um, so we can have about seven to nine nests um, 
per year uh, and our neighbours also have them as well so it's a lot of house martins and swallows it's a mix of the two uh, birds and it's just so lovely to have them back and we absolutely love it because we can see them from the kitchen window so um, they kind of swoop down right where I'm standing they swoop down then into the garage and then go up into the the nest but I have to say that every year when they first go back we have to kind of get used to each other because we obviously aren't used to them anymore so we kind of just walk out here without thinking and if they've you know left the nest and they're swooping down we can kind of end up colliding so for the first couple of weeks there's a lot of kind of dodging each other so it can be a little bit perilous but it's very special having them here that this was the first year that we've ever done this kind of plant theatre idea and I've really enjoyed it it's been such a pleasure just coming into the house and every time we go in and out of the front door to see all these lovely flowers and to see kind of the evolution because like one pot kind of comes on like you know these gorgeous absolutely stunning tulips I've never seen tulips this big before in my life so it's been really really lovely to see them and they've opened first and then like slowly, slowly, another pot opens, another pot opens. Like these ones you can see are still very much in bud, but these ones are a little bit further along. So it's just been really nice to just kind of constantly have those flowers kind of coming up all the time right at the front door. Just really cheerful. And I've just so enjoyed all the different colors. So I'm going to get a vase of flowers for the kitchen just because I really want to bring some of this joy into the house and we've got so many down in the field. For me, flowers in the garden are one of the biggest joys of actually having a garden and when we moved here nearly five years ago, the previous owners had really just put in shrubs and trees. There was really no flowers at all. So one of the first things I did when we moved in was I just went online and just ordered a ton of bulbs and I just knew that it was something that we wanted in the garden. I knew it was something easy we could just quickly put in and also I knew it was going to be something that would actually grow on year and year for us. The nicest thing about daffodils is that they do naturalize so they will multiply over the years and that's just so rewarding in the fact that you just buy one box of bulbs and then year on year you're just getting more and more and more which is really fantastic. And because they're multiplying I never feel guilty about picking them so I can go down to the field or the near the vegetable garden under the trees and I can just go ahead and just pick a vase of daffodils and know that it really does doesn't make a big dent in the garden. I can enjoy them in the house or in the garden and I don't have that kind of gardener's guilt about cutting flowers. And these won't go to waste either. So what I'll do is I'll leave them in the pots until they've gone over so the flowers have died. I'll deadhead them and then I'll leave the stems and the leaves on for as long as possible until they're absolutely kind of really wilted. They've gone yellow, they've really gone flat and floppy. And then I'll leave them in the pot to just dry out for as long as I possibly can. That's normally like a good few weeks. And then I will simply pop the bulbs out, give them a bit of a shake off, trim off all the greenery and I'll pop them in a bucket and I'll bring them down wherever there's a spot in the garden that I want daffodils next year and we'll just dig a hole and pop all the bulbs in, put some soil in, cover them up and then just see what happens and honestly nine out of ten times they come back up and they multiply and they give us lots and lots of flowers. And then you do want to deadhead the ones in the garden. So once they've gone like this, or they, you can see that the flower has completely died, just I'll simply come in and I'll snip anywhere on the on the stem, like about this much, and basically that will allow the leaves to start to take all the energy that it needs for next year's flowering. So it's really important to just deadhead and allow those leaves to now stop producing the energy for the flower and start producing the energy for the bulb's health for next year. And the same goes for the hyacinths. So while I cut some daffodils for the vase, take a look at some of the daffodils in our garden.
always get excited when there's a food delivery. This is the newly launched barbecue box from Swaledale. So Swaledale is an online ethical sustainable butcher and basically they've got a network of about 30 farms in the Yorkshire Dales that basically have specialty cattle that roam the fields. Uh, and what I really really like about Swaledale is that they adopt a nose to tail approach which means that they use the whole animal uh, when they actually sell them and butcher them. So the barbecue box is a huge assortment of different cuts of meat, some stuff that we wouldn't actually typically buy. Like these are lamb kofters, not something that we typically make ourselves, but as part of the barbecue box, we'll definitely give those a, a go. One of my favorites, they've got steak burgers. We absolutely love chicken on the barbie. Uh, so you get an assortment of chicken breast and drumsticks, ice cubes. Then on the pork side of things, we've got Yorkshire breakfast chipolatas and pork loin. And then two of our favorites, we've got the ribeye steak and the Korean style barbecue beef short rib. So the plan is to have our first barbie of the season on the King's coronation. Obviously, it is going to be weather contingent. So it'll be fun to see whether it's going to be a classic British barbecue where we're standing out with our tongs in the pouring rain under umbrellas. So it's a really exciting day today. All of our hard work has finally paid off and we can really start to get stuff into the vegetable garden. As you can see, the vegetable beds are clean, they're tidy, they've got lots of soil in them, they're ready to go. And now we just need to start actually growing something. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot still up at the house which is growing on from seed, but we want to actually finally get some stuff actually into these beds today. So you'll be putting in some potatoes or we're, onions? We're doing potatoes, we're doing onion sets, we're doing asparagus. Wow. Uh, and we grow all of our lettuce and some of our other greens like kale from seed directly in the veg beds. And we have got cloches that we actually put over the lettuce beds. We actually are running a couple of weeks behind. We normally seed out the lettuce in kind of the first week of April but the weather hasn't participated, so we're gonna be putting in the lettuce today. While Mars does that, I'm gonna be in charge of flowers, as always, and so I'm gonna be putting in the roses all along the front of the vegetable garden, so I'm really excited to get the roses in. It's the first time we're really growing roses properly. And we've got a black and a red currant in the trolley, which is also ready to plant, which we picked up at the garden center. And that's gonna go along here, which we call our berry fence, because this is just fully loaded with berries, so we're just gonna add a two more into there, and hopefully, really have a nice harvest of currants and blackberries or raspberries raspberries goji berries just the berries <laughs> we're berry crazy <laughs> we're very crazy i've got my seed potatoes my onion sets and my plan time to get planting so we're going to start by planting the potatoes in our raised beds i made these two years ago using reclaimed pallets they're all heat treated the reason that i actually built them from pallets because the price of timber after COVID went through the roof they were really, really expensive and pallets are completely free. So, so if you've got a garden center or a hardware merchant or something like that, that actually gets a lot of pallet deliveries, you can just go to them. They're usually just giving them away for free. Take those, put them together, really cheap and simple way of actually putting together some raised beds. So seed potatoes aren't actually seeds. They are just potatoes from the year before. So even if you grow your own potatoes and you leave them in a, in a dark place, Normally by about March or April, you'll start to see that they actually start to chit. Chitting is basically just little sprouts that start to come out of the potatoes. That's what's gonna form the leaves and that's what's gonna actually make the plant from which the potatoes will come. So this is the new saw that we've just put in. So it's really light and fluffy, so I don't need tools to actually make holes. All I gotta do is take the potato. These probably should have chitted a little bit more. It's not a big deal because they'll still get going. And then I pop them in about hand deep, about kind of 15 to 20 centimeters. They just go into the soil, cover them up, couldn't be easier. We grow Maris Piper potatoes because it's our favorite in terms of the versatility of the potato. You can use them for French fries, you can use them for chips, you can use them for baking, you can use them for mash. They're just a wonderful potato. We built that row of beds two years ago and I thought that a 50 centimeter bed would have been just a good height because it would have actually required less soil to put in there. The big mistake we discovered is that we built those beds at around 50 centimeters and that was a perfect height for the rabbits to actually jump into. Once the rabbits find a place, they will just get in there and they will just dig stuff out. So I was constantly fighting with them last year to just keep them from digging up our onions which were growing in there. So now what I've done is I've put up these boxes and crates to go on top of the raised beds. That actually does deter them from going in. So last year when it came to building beds, we put these in. These are a meter high. And what do you know? The rabbits can't jump up there so we don't have to cover these. So the strategy now is we can even plant stuff in here that rabbits love. We've grown onions and garlic in those beds, which rabbits aren't typically supposed to like, but they'll still go in there, they'll still dig stuff out. So because we like to work with wildlife and not work against it, we found that this is the best solution that works for us. We actually grew potatoes in this bed. They still try to get in here too. And just to show you how resilient potatoes are, 
we thought we'd pull all the potatoes out, but you know, there are often tiny little potatoes that you miss when you're actually harvesting. And what happens is that they self seed again. So all of these would actually be potatoes. I'm going to actually pull these out because I want to grow onions in here, but I'll just show you what's down here. <laughs> potatoes from last year. <laughs> And the one thing that we are just so fortunate about where we are is we've got such an abundance of earthworms. They just come out of everywhere and just pulling out those last few potatoes. I'm, I'm not going to disturb the rest of them. And all that they do is they're constantly just eating through all the organic matter that's actually in the ground itself, nourishing that soil. So, you know, they're doing a lot of the work for us in terms of trying to grow healthy vegetables. Planting onions is very similar to planting potatoes. The only thing I've learned, just like it is with garlic, you need to pre-make your holes because it's very easy to lose track as to where you have or haven't put stuff into. So by making the holes in advance, all you need to do now is take your onion sets, pop the onions in, and then cover all the holes in one shot. So the spacing for my onions is obviously a lot tighter than it is for potatoes. And the reason for that is because each one of these onion sets is going to grow into the size of an onion. So obviously onions are of a certain size. Potatoes, because one potato will probably make, I don't know, 20 or 30 potatoes, they're, they're basically spreading out and sprawling underneath the actual ground. So you can get a lot tighter with the onions than you would with potatoes. And planting them, the only thing you need to be aware of is that the little root is at the bottom. This is where the little green bit is going to sprout from from the top. So they just go into the ground like that. pinks. We've gone with a very dark uh, purple pink and then we've gone with Atlantic Star which is supposed to be kind of like a corally pinky colour and then that one over there which is really cuff which is um, supposed to be kind of more of a reddish pink like a fuchsia pink because I want to keep these so that we remember what they are but I'm going to take off this horrible plasticky string stuff because we don't like that in the garden. Just replace it with a bit of jute and then basically I'll just tie this on to the back fence behind the rose so that we always know what it is. Using a good whack of the fish meal uh, which is an organic fertilizer from our trusty eco worm because I think that's going to really give them extra boost. If it's true, I just need to look it up and start reading about roses now. But the only thing I was taught when I was younger from my grandfather who grew a lot of roses was that roses are very hungry and like to be really fed a lot. So he always used to fertilize his roses a lot. So I'm hoping that the fish meal will give them a good start to life and we'll have lots of beautiful roses around the front of the vegetable garden. While we've been gardening, we've been having our noisy neighbors next to us, these guys right here. Little lambs come over, very inquisitive as to what we're doing and what we're getting up to. It's turned out to be a glorious afternoon yeah, lovely. and it's been a massively productive session. Yeah. Kirsten's getting on with the roses, she's nearly done. And I've seeded out just about everything I need in the vegetable garden. I've also been super organized, which is not typically like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything has been ticked off on my plan. So we've seeded out everything that we typically eat throughout the course of the year. We've got Chinese cabbage, we've got pak choy, we've got radishes, lots and lots of different salads so we can have uh, nice salads during the course of the summer. Obviously we've got a lot of kale. And then towards the end of this month, we'll probably pop in all the pumpkins. So generally speaking, really pleased with that. Good session, nice weather, beautiful setting. So 
of the plants are certainly starting to build up with regards to <laughs> how much we've got to, to plant. To plant. Uh, and we even got some more at the garden centre. We didn't show you that trip that was over the weekend. And um, we got some geraniums and um, some salad lettuce, which I thought would maybe be nice here in the herb garden. So yeah, we've got, we're certainly building up a little army of plants that need to go out. No shortage of jobs. Yeah, and actually all these Dutch grown uh, bulbs, these summer bulbs, I mean, they have really, really come on. They're all in the window and I was actually really hoping to get those out this week and just leave the trays outside here in the kind of sunshine and allow them to just have the fresh air and the rain. But unfortunately tomorrow I think it's gonna be quite stormy and then over the weekend it goes really, really cold again. So I just think I don't really wanna shock them too much. They're loving being in, in there with the sun on them. So I think I feel a bit cruel putting them out in the, in the cold temperature. So we'll just wait for it to, for this cold spell to pass and then it'll warm up again. So it was a good productive week. We got a lot of jobs done. I'm really happy that all the seedlings in the vegetable garden are in. Yeah. And a big shout out to one of our followers, Danny. Yeah. Uh, he left us such a nice comment basically saying that we've motivated him to get more involved in gardening. Love that. So, Love you know, that. that's just a fantastic Hi, Danny. thing. Yeah, honestly, that just makes our content so worthwhile when we hear things like that because that really is for us a big yeah. motivation. So a huge thank you, Danny. It was such a lovely comment and really means the world to us. So happy gardening and I hope that you're yeah, also getting some jobs done in the garden this week too. So that's it for this week. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend and a big thank you once again to this week's sponsor, Dutch Grown. Don't forget, guys, you can use the discount code that we'll leave below, but it is My Home Farm 10 and that'll give you 10% discount. Thanks for watching guys see you next week take care bye